Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial how to custom design bathroom sinks for Shaper 3D. This is part one in which I will show you how to style a linear and an organic sink and import external 3D files like a faucet, a drain and a soap dispenser so we can better position all the openings. Please feel free to download the shared final design so you can follow this demonstration better. As always, this session is filled with many interesting sketching and modeling tips and tricks. And now let's get started. Let's start with a new file. First, we want to set the unit system to centimeter and all our snap targets are turned on. The Sink has an oval proportion of 100 centimeter being wide and 60 centimeters being deep. Go to sketch, rectangle from center, and from the world center, I start sketching a rectangle. And now there we can see that the rectangle is actually um, too small. That's 23 and by 13. And that's because our grid system, upper right corner, is set to 0 0.5 centimeters. That's basically our zoom level. Now with two fingers, when I pinch and zoom out, you can see that this says now five centimeters. Delete this rectangle, do this one more time. Ah, and see there, 100 by 60, super easy. Okay, now I use the grid actually to quickly sketch out this rectangle to the correct proportion, but I would like to lock the dimensions correctly. So I can select an edge, here zoom in, so I can see clearly the dimension with the pencil selected and hit green button. There now you see there's a lock icon. So we added actually a length dimension here. And do the same, by the way, I'd like this to be 50 or 40 we can change the dimension easily. Very good. In my process, I always like to add all the dimensions and constraints manually. So auto constraint is turned off in my case. All these edges, I would like to have a vertical horizontal constraint. One shortcut is double tap an edge. It selects all sketch elements. And then on right side, we select horizontal and vertical. Very good. Close the sketch, open the browser, or zoom out. With one finger, we will go into a 3D view. Now this rectangle currently sits actually on the ground. This has to go up. The maximum height here can be 86 centimeters. So I will select the sketch in the browser. You see, I'm not actually editing the sketch. It's more I'm manipulating the sketch object. And at the center of the sketch, you see the 3D move widget. There are two ways now how I can move this one up. I can, with the pencil, click and drag the arrow, and then pay attention till the number there is correct. And you see here we run out of screen space. I can also enter a correct value right into the field. There we are. Or I select my object, click on the arrow, don't drag, type in the value, enter. Very good. So let's verify this. I go into a side view from the center. I draw a line straight up. Very good. Yeah. So that's. Eighty six. Very nice. Good. So the sink has actually a material thickness of ten centimeters. Let's actually extrude this one down. And the first design I would like to do is linear. So on this face, I would like to add more to the sketch. The pencil I selected with a finger I double tap. And that, if I zoom out now a little bit, will put 
the grid right onto that face. If I release the finger now, you will see how the grid now snapped to the world round. So redo this. There we are. Save the view. And the opening will be 40 centimeters white and 30 centimeters deep. Again, with a rectangle. I will use here the grid. To explore this, there's 30, 40. There we are. Nice. Double tap. Also here again, quickly and add engines. Very good. And I would like left and at the front to have 10 centimeters of a gap. I'm just drawing two lines to visualize the 10 centimeters. So this here, I just only have to move down till this edge lines up with the grid, aka the 10 centimeter mark. Very nice. Now I have plenty of space in the back for think, sorry, the faucet. And on the right side, I have enough space to put other products down. Let's go into a 3D view. Because this object has a height of 10 centimeters, I can create now a depression that's maybe nine centimeters. I need to have a little bit of material left. So I can't select this base and then extrude this in, which will cut and then cut through. Well, technically speaking, we can cut through, but well, the water will just fall down. We need something to catch the water. So nine centimeters, that is good. This is a very beautiful rectangular cut. So let's make this more interesting. I would like actually this to be more triangular in shape, this face, currently it's square. Let me show you a little trick. So this, as we can see, lower right corner here, that's nine centimeters. Okay, so that means this edge, I can move up nine centimeters. And that actually will fuse these two edges together and I have a triangle. Now these bases I would like to be angled more. Let me show you how we can do this. I will select this edge, move, and I move this over by one centimeter. Let's go to, very good. Okay. To rotate these two faces. I can do this two ways. I select the face, I select this edge, and then can rotate this. Okay. Easy by selecting that line, it turns it actually into a rotation edge. Very good. Or undo everything. I can also select this line, go to scale and scale this by 90%. Very good. Okay, now that looks good. So when water flows in, we need to have an outpour. Because everything is angled, the water will, because of gravity, gravitate to there. So there I would like to create a nice horizontal slot. Let me show you how we can very precisely cut it right to there. So this line I have selected and I can go to more, project, and now I can project it into something. And I select this face there, okay, click done. It didn't really, however, bring this up uh, because we're kind of like projecting this edge onto the on geometry. We will do it actually this way. You project and now with the pencil, I will tap the ground. You see, it will use actually the ground as a project, projection canvas and done. Very nice. Or I can hide this, select this line, and now I can select the sketch and go project. That brings it up. Now, the reason why I did 
this is simply when I have geometry right extruded from the sketch, you see that the sketch is hidden. But I need it from this geometry, this line to be projected into the sketch. That was basically the reason why we projected this down and then we project this back up. Very good. Okay, so this line is perfect. I do not want this to move, so I will lock it. There we are. Okay. And I will draw there. Okay. And if I go into a 3D view, you notice, oh, what happened here? I actually started drawing on the ground. Okay. So I made a little mistake. I did not select the sketch with a finger double tap to move right onto there. So I was, as you could see, I was able to manipulate the sketch like lock a point, but when I started drawing, it drew it onto a different plane. So for drawing, then we always want to select a sketch or face and with a finger then double tap. So it moves the sketch grid right onto 32 is to 2 centimeters, it's too big, make this small centimeter is fine. Very good. Okay, there we are. Oh, we select this and then we extrude down. And the moment this starts intersecting with the other geometry, as you can see, it actually cuts through. So from additive, it became Subtractive. Before we do this, however, I like to core everything out. It might be smart to actually do a little bit of coring this out. Currently, this is a huge solid block. We can select all these edges, and because everything is linear, we can do maybe a small chamfer. There we are. Then I will select this lower edge, or lower face, and select the shell command. 0. 0.5 meters, five millimeters. Let's say this is a plastic composite material. Good. Here you see actually how perfect this is. Now in the next step, under here, we would then basically design something that sits under it for the water to be caught and then guided into. Very nice. Okay. So you see, it was actually quite, quite easy to create something as linear and then via moving edges, scaling edges, rotating faces, we can create a design. That's really quite nice. Try something else out. I would like to actually move everything. Could we do this? Is that possible? So when I select all these faces, there and there, very good. Go to move. It somewhat moves. So Let's see, when we want to move everything, what do we have to do here? Here, this part that doesn't work. Okay, well, if I select all these edges too, is this then everything I need? So you see there's actually the slot. The slot is not moving, okay. So let's select all Bases here. Good. And now I can move this very easily and reposition it. So let's say at one point we want to change the position, then I don't have to undo my design. I simply select all the necessary edges and faces and just move them. Okay. So this is our design one. Let's call this linear. Very good. Okay.
these here. I will select and delete. Because now I would like to show you how we can do a design that is more organic. We will use this block to extrude this down by 10 centimeters. Very good. And I would like to create now a nice fluid design. So the sink, so the, the water area is actually carved out like a sphere. And then there's a depression for soap bar set on it. And the opening should be 30, 40 centimeter diameter. Okay, I will select the face with a finger double tap. Very good. And now I will select the circle. Twenty centimeters. That is good. Very nice. I can extrude this one down. Centimeters. And then I can add a draft to it. You can see by rotating this, the side actually gets angled. Pretty cool. So what I can do now is this. I can fill it and this I can fill it too. Let's go to a front view and turn on cut section. And look at that. It looks really nice and fluid. I will hide the sketch here. Also here, like I showed before, we can select certain elements. In this case here, I just need this particular Base, or you can select this and move this up and down to adjust actually the extrusion depth. And also these fillets, I can adjust afterward. If I don't like a fillet, I can even delete it or reapply it. The beauty of direct modeling here. Make this 10 is also 10. So they're exactly the same. Very good. Okay, nice. So I would like to have a soap, um, an opening for soap bar. And I will go to up view. Actually, no, I will go to this face with a finger double tap. So I move the grid to there and I will go to ellipse and somewhere here, draw myself an ellipse. This is 10. So 20 centimeters. So the 10 is actually the radius. I would like this to be 10 on it. Five and two point five, so ten centimeters by five centimeters. Very good. I need a revolve line and axis. So you see, I drew actually a line right along the grid through the center. Then I can go to this view, select half of it, select this axis, and revolve this three hundred sixty degrees. Very good reason why I did this is double tap object, then this over. I will move this just a notch up. It does not 50% um, sit in it. It sits a little bit less in it. Bring this to here. Good. And Let's rotate this like this. Very good. Okay, so this volume I would like to be removed from this volume. This is my target. Cool. And then I go to subtract. I do not want the tool to be kept. Click done. Okay, so there you see we actually cut something out. Further, 
I am able to adjust this by dragging and expanding it. I can also see what happens now. I can rotate it. And I moved this over to here because, so let's say this is for a soap bar. Over time, there will be some um, liquid and liquefied soap center there. I would like to, with a finger and some water, wash this down into the sink. So I will make this overlap. And I need a little bit of a channel. And this is basically this channel I created this way. And this edge is rather harsh. Let's round this. Okay, there you see it. Actually quite nice. We can make this bigger, we can make this smaller. Everything here is adjustable afterwards. Pretty cool. And if we don't like it, well, we can simply select this, delete this there, and delete this. We just remove it. I have actually a few elements I would like to import now. So let's go to here. So I have a soap dispenser. There it is. Okay, so here are the sketches from the soap dispenser. I will remove those. There is the soap dispenser. I move this one up and I would like the soap dispenser to sit perfectly on my surface. Actually, very easy. Go to this line. See, there's the center point. The pencil, I start clicking and dragging with a finger, I rotate, and I just simply, ah, oh, here's the center point. I position it, enter it on the rectangle. Very good. Now, the soap dispenser, I can move back to here. Very good. Maybe a little bit back. And now I would like to create not just a depression where this could sit in. I would actually like to create something that is slightly raised. The sink is actually going into the, the block and I would like to have something that extrudes from it for the soap display. Okay, so now I need to figure out how can I create a perfect yeah, revolve around this bottle? Super easy. So I select here the cylindrical shape and then on the toolbar, I, I select add axis. Okay, on this axis, I can create an uh, Construction plane. Currently, we don't really see this. The only um, suggestion is add plane to curve. That is not necessarily what I want. So what I will do is I will say add and then construction plane. And here we will select through edge at an angle. Now, there's my axis. And I can rotate this back there parallel to the x-axis, very good. With a finger now, click on this plane, double tap, very good. And now we can zoom in a little bit more. And there we can see now where is the center, where is actually my other element. So I will draw a line here down, down, here, very easy, not complicated. Now I put in a little bit of a gap, so 0 0.1 centimeter. What is the height? 1.1, so it's actually just one centimeter, very good. I can select this fill. Sketch, select the axis, and then 
I would like this to be revolved. I do not see the revolve command because I did not select the sketch filling. Okay, there's the revolve command. Turn 60 degrees. Very good. Now, this construction plane I can hide and hide. Very good. The soap dispenser I hide. There's now this ring. What I will do is this ring and the rest here I will union together because then I get sharp edges, which look at that in round. I can round them perfectly. And if I continue, you see how on top it does not grow bigger, um, but along the horizontal area, this grows further. Cool. I can do there one centimeter. Take a look at the soap dispenser there. It perfectly fits in there. Also here again, I can reposition this. I just select those elements, move, and I can move it around. Now here we have to be careful where or how we start this intersecting, because the fillets start to intersect. We'll just put it to here. Okay, there's my soap dispenser. Oh. How do we position the soap dispenser correctly? Again, not a big deal. The align tool will do the work for us. Our face align, then from the center and snap it to there. Okay, pretty nice. Okay, it's up to you if you want to keep all these other sketches for clarity, I will simply remove those right now. Very good. Here, this we remove. I have a few more objects to bring in. So here I have a push and seal drain. This is the geometry of product. Um, you can buy. The proportions are pretty close. So this is basically a push and seal drain. This will be pushed down and clicks and seals. You push one more time and it snaps back to its original position. Okay. So I have the sketch I don't want. There's the tubing, there's the seal, there's this, very good. All this I will put into tubing and create a, um, a group folder. Let's call this drain. Okay. Now this whole thing I need, well, I want to ideally position right on there, so. How do we do this idea? Here, same brick. There, and there. A bit closer. Okay. Now I will select this, and then do we have a line command? We we do not have the line command there, right? Okay. Um. All this I will hide, hide this one. Here I have a nice flat disc, which I will turn off, go to align, and we will do the same from the center of the disc to the center of there. Now it sits right on it. Alternatively, by the way, I can also Sorry for the rotation. Simply select the edge of this tube and make this align with the edge there. Cool. Okay. But then you would say, well, cool. Um, but the rest does not align. How do we how do we do this now? 
actually also pretty. So here, this we will align to this edge. Back, maps back. And even the circular face we can see. You see, it was actually pretty intense. This is actually centered. In our case, this is perfectly centered. That's really great because now we can make a cut section, turn on also our sink, and now we can study everything better. So the whole drain has to be moved down more. And there will be a little bit of steel material that has to be pushed on there. So here I will move this actually flush to there. Very good. And instead of moving this, I will align this edge with there, this edge. Good. So you see, actually, it sits right in it. There now I need to cut a ring in. We can do this because this is a flat disk by simply making an offset sketch. This making this a little bit smaller. This very good. Select then the still and extrude through, make a cut. And then this sketch we can remove. Okay. The reason why I did this, now I have an opening. We can go to a view that's good like this. So this needs to be rounded. Now when I make this, it actually shrinks a little bit. Good. So what's actually the diameter? Twenty two. So 44. Now these openings are not cut so that the um, whatever we inside there is has zero millimeter tolerance. So it will be a little bit of tolerance. Also, this is a tick too low. So I can move this up a little bit. And again, that would be some sort of a seal material. Keep in mind when we zoom in here, this looks very big, but this is just a distance of two. So this here has to be moved lower down. This very good. So that's kind of like our seal, basically. Sorry, not the seal. The the drain cap put into position. Now I would like to also have faucet. Okay, so bring in our faucet. This design has actually two sketches. Style, faucet, ring, and sweep. Move this, and then we have the faucet, the base, or the water dial and all this I will put into one group again. There. Then we can move this up, rotate this. Oh, it's a question now. Oh, where do we position this? Okay. Here. And this all now I would like actually to go onto there. So we can select this inner ring, then we do the align again to maybe here, 
you actually it snapped right to that. Very good. And then this lower edge, I can align to there. Cool. Now oh, they are both at the correct height. Now I can simply go into top view. That's also perfectly centered. I will. I would like this to rotate 45 degree, but it's not rotating right around center. So I move the 3D widget onto this pipe. Then I can rotate this 45 degree. Very good. And move this into that corner. Very nice. So, and then here, same deal. So, this whole thing I would like to align. I will see where do we have a good snap target, for example, there. A and base, then I here. This, for example, is for order. This edge line up this lower edge. No, this this would be the style rotate cold and hot water and then the water quantity. Cool. So you see, actually, we're bringing in then also rather primitive or simplistic looking hardware pieces. We can very quickly then prototype and get a good idea of the future design of such a sink. To bring this to an end, so when this is all nice and round, we would want actually these edges to be nice and round. Is here we one centimeter, so nice and soft. So like the bottom base shell five. Good. And there you see this actually, in this case here, moved upwards. So I'm not sure if I like this. If we delete this. Aha, you see, very good. It actually added back the material. So this here will be on top, and at the bottom, we removed this. Now, when we have here a pipe, Obviously, we need to have a hole down there. How do we do this? Actually, very easy. This is the base. Now, oh, this one here, double tap, make a copy, then down. Okay. Now, I will go ahead, double tap this whole design, select this copy, subtract. Yeah, don't keep the original. It here will hide, and you see how actually it cut this gap out. This object now I can remove, and there we now have perfectly cut out a hole for where the faucet actually should be put in. Very good. Okay, so this basically sums up then how to design another sink that is more round, bring in. Um, exterior files, and then design more actually a nice looking sink.